Okay, advanced accounting um, chapter four deals with intercompany transactions and number 42 deals with the sale of equipment. So the instructions say that um, you work for the parent company and your company acquired the sub on January 1st, 2009. The purchase price was for $300,000 um, of excess of, of book value, which accounts for $200,000 to a customer list and then $100,000 to Goodwill. The customer list is amortized over 10 years. In 2012, your subsidiary sold equipment to the parent for a cash price of $120,000. The subsidiary had acquired the equipment at a cost of $140,000, so that would be our historical cost, and then depreciated the equipment over 10-year useful life using straight line method and had depreciated it for four years at the time of the sale. The parent, again, who is acquiring it at $120,000, well, um, depreciate it over the remaining six years, but again, at a different amount because they acquired it at the $120,000. They give us the financial statements for them, and um, if I scan down here, and then we get, so here's our financial statements. So again, we got our parent and our sub, um, statement of retained earnings, income statement, and balance sheet. So, so we got those in there. Now, if I go back up, the first thing that it asks us to do is to prepare the journal entry that the subsidiary made to record the sale of the equipment to the parent and then record the um, entry on the parent side. So again, we you kind of have to map it out a little bit, but they received, they sold it for 120000 their historical cost was 140,000. So um, let me just open a new sheet. So then if we had 100, if our cost was 140,000, and then we are depreciating that over 10 years, our depreciation is going to be the 140,000 divided by 10. Whoops, so it's going to be 14,000. For a year. So then to calculate out what it would have been after four years of depreciation, to come up with what that accumulated depreciation is, it'd be the 14,000 times four. So that's the 56,000. Then if we want to sum that for our net book value, we see that on our books it was 196,000. Then if we again the problem tells us that we sold it for, um, whoops, sorry, I need to subtract those. It's 84,000 is our net book value. Um, then we sold it for proceeds of 120,000. So then when we subtract out that net book value, we see that we end up then with a gain. Subtract, I do this every time, so I gotta subtract. Okay. So then we, this is our gain. So we have a $36,000 gain. So again, I would kind of map that out ahead, you know, kind of ahead of time or off to the side. Then if we go back though to our journal entries, then it kind of becomes clear. So we're gonna say, we're taking off the $140,000 in property, plant, and equipment. We're taking the $56,000 off of accumulated depreciation. We're receiving the $120,000 in, and then we're recording the gain of 36. So then that's what all of the, these entries would be, and these would be recorded right on the sub's books. Now the parent is receiving the equipment, so they're gonna debit that for $120,000 and credit cash. So then this says, when we come to this entry, this is going to be our intercompany entry. So then I need to explain that a little bit further. So if we go back over here and say, okay, this is what uh, would be on our subs books. And if we want to go over down here and say, okay, now on our parents' books, they would have a cost of 120,000 and then their depreciation 
would be the 120,000 divided by the remaining six years. Sorry, it doesn't like my comma in there, but okay, it corrected it. So that they're, they're gonna take $20,000 a year. So then um, if we wanna map this out, so let's say the sale happened then January of 2012. So in 2012, if the, if the sub had kept it, it would still have the historical cost Um, it would still have the historical cost of the 140,000, but now we would add another 14,000, so our accumulated depreciation would go up to 70,000. Okay, then down here, the parents would have 120,000, and they would have recorded the 20,000 in 2012. Let me try to get my decimal or my commas in there. Okay, so then that would then, again, had the sale not happened and we want to go back to the subs, this, these, are the, these are the numbers that we want to go back to. So then when we look at what happened, then now we're out in 2013. So then 2013, it would go up to 84,000. Then that would be another year's depreciation would go up to the to the 40. So every year is going to go that's going to increase like that. So if we go back to say, OK, um, when we're doing our entry here, it would, the, it would be the beginning of the year of 2013. So we would be focused on these numbers. Um, so then if we go back to what they've done, they have reduced the gain on sale. They're eliminating that, taking it off of the books. They are debiting the equipment because again, let's look back over here. It should go back to the 140. It's currently at the 120. So for it to go back as if the sale had never happened, we need to debit it for that 20,000 to get it back up to the 140. Then our accumulated depreciation, right now all that's on the all that's accumulated depreciation for the properties on the parents' books at 20,000. We want it to go back to as if the sale didn't happen, and then the sub would have had $70,000 of accumulated depreciation. So then that is where um, oh, the 50,000 would be coming into play. And I guess they're doing it at the time of the acquisition. Um, so I'm doing it for the 2013. So this, when they say, yeah, they say record it at the, the year of the sale. So these would be the year of the sale, which would be the 2012. So then in that case, you're back to these numbers to say, okay, I'm bringing my, I'm bringing my cost up to the 140 from the 120. I'm eliminating this gain and then I am bringing the accumulated depreciation back to 56,000. But then at the start of 2012 is what we wanna focus on for what we're doing for our, for our I entries for this problem. So then again, if I go down, let's see, as we get into these ones. So then these are the ones that I'm mapping out here. So we've got our intercompany gain of um that that's the that's the uh you know the footnote of the entry so in that though we're we're bringing the equipment up to the twenty thousand. we are bringing the accumulated depreciation up to the seventy thousand because right now twenty thousand is recorded um, but then we also have to go through and look at and look at this gain so then I'll do that kind of separately here. So because the depreciation, because we have a difference in the depreciation, so again, if we look at what would be here compared to here, we have a $6,000 difference in the depreciation. And then that we're gonna have to credit 
depreciation expense each year of the service life. And then the gain is amortized out through that depreciation adjustment. So then if we start in 2012, when it was sold, we start with a $36,000 gain. Then in two, in two, at the end of, so this will, let's say January 2012, right? Then at December of 2012, we're going to amortize out 6000 So then at when we come over here to this year to say, okay, now we're in 2000 at the end of 2012, our total is going to be thirty thousand. Then, if we kind of keep that running total to say, okay, then in 2013 we're going to amortize another six thousand. If we would go out to 2016, or sorry, 2013, the end of 2013. Our unamortized gain is going to be twenty four thousand. Then at the end of two thousand and fourteen, if we were going out that far, it's going to go to eighteen thousand. So then you can see you can see that it that it keeps decreasing by that six thousand dollars each year. Um, so then you do kind of want to map that out. And sometimes the problems will ask you to map out this, to amortize out that gain. And that's what they're having you do. So it, it, you're just figuring out what the gain was at the start, taking the difference in the depreciation and subtracting that out at the end of each year. And then again, if you had to do this journal entry at the end of each year, you would just keep this process going where then you'd, you'd add another year of depreciation. Oops. And then here, and then here then you'd be comparing it to what the parent has and again adding another year of depreciation for them. So then that would be how you're building that I sale entry every year you're comparing the, the what it should be, which is the subs, to what the parents is and recording that. And then the difference is going to be this unamortized gain that is left in the equity investment. So then you would keep that going all the way through the useful life. So then if I come back to the problem, then this is really what you want to focus on. So again, that was trying to map it out, but it, I did it a little bit different. Th this is all in the year of the sale, um, but here it does show you that that excess depreciation is the 6,000, and you're gonna be amortizing it out, taking it out of that gain every year. Then it has us go through and reconcile our equity income. So we take our subs net income, which again is gonna be right off of the income statement here and then we adjust it for the, the amortization of the asset and then add that $6,000 excess depreciation or that deferred gain. And that will tie out to our equity income. Then when we go through the equity investment, we go through and we do all of our E entries. Then we go through and we do our A entries. Um, then we do our C entries. And then the final piece is going to be this, this unamortized gain, so that what's left in that year. So again, looking back over here, at the end of, at the beginning of 2013, it's going to be that 30,000. Um, and again, when I do it on the board, I map it out in a little bit more detail because it helps me to build my entries. So then if we come down here, then these are the entries. So again, we're eliminating our equity income eliminating the dividends, that net credit goes to the equity investment, eliminate our common stock, paid in capital, beginning of the year retained earnings, that credit goes to the equity investment, set up the customer list at the beginning of the year value. So here this shows you that 
It started at 200,000, but we're depreciating at $20,000 a year, and we're now four years into it. We acquired the sub in 2009, and we are now in 2013. So that's where that 120,000 comes in. Goodwill still stays the same at the 100,000. The D entry records our amortization, and then here is those I entries. So again, I think it's helpful to kind of go back and map it out in a little bit of a different way where you're looking at it each year to say, okay, well, I know I need to go back to the subs. I'm gonna compare that to this, and my journal entry is going to you know, adjust those, and then the difference ends up this unamortized gain that is stuck in the equity investment. So we can see that there. And then every year until it's fully depreciated, we would have this depreciation expense adjustment where we're reducing the depreciation expense to bring it back down to the subs amount and then debiting the accumulated depreciation. And then here is the, the final product where we put it all into um, our, our uh, consolidating worksheets. So again, we, you can look those over, um, but we can see our debits equal our credits. We can go through all of our double checks to say, okay, our equity, invest, our equity income is zeroed out. Our net e income equals our parents. Our ending retained earnings equals the parents. We have effectively eliminated the entire equity investment. And then our common stock, paid in capital, and retained earnings all equals the parents.